alaikum. Tom. Thank you very much for coming. Sure. I have certainly enjoyed uh, your talk. Uh, in some ways, my question is uh, somewhat similar to his. I have two, please. Uh, the United States Constitution, after certainly a very, very long struggle, uh, gives all people, in theory, equality. The Sharia does not. So isn't that an uh, insoluble problem? Uh, and again, I was thinking particularly about women and non-Muslims living in majority Muslim cultures. Uh, the second question is that the law in the U.S. is based on the idea that the human being makes the law. And therefore, the law can be changed as the society advances or thinks it has advanced. Uh, and the Sharia says that God is the lawgiver. So here we also have a major conflict. So as we talk about communities coming into the West, be it the United States or be it uh, Europe, where after tremendous struggles, people have fought to get equality uh, for everyone, including homosexuals and, and women. Isn't it a problem for communities to come in and suggest that they should be able to live differently, yet within the rubric of that Western society that has struggled to attain the equal rights for everybody? Uh, how do I answer this question? The only way I could do that is by simply <coughs> representing my entire talk. Because that's exactly what I was trying to say. I, I started my talk by telling you that the Sharia, as technically legally defined, is an ideal that is utterly unattainable. Then it has, it has social manifestations through the intervention of the human intellect, and that is the process known as fiqh, which varies from place to place and moment to moment. We have example upon example within traditional classical Islamic law of how the Sharia, which is, which again, I'm going to say it for the third time, resides in the mind of God, is made a social reality through human intervention. And that human intervention socializes the law, and because it becomes so socialized, it is therefore susceptible to change and modification, as indeed it has been changed and modified through time. And one can go on giving example upon example upon example of how the Sharia has been. By here by Sharia, we mean the synonym for Islamic law has undergone changes. And as for the Sharia operating within a largely secular society, I've given you the example of India. I've given you, I can give you examples where there's talk of this in South Africa, places like Trinidad. There are several countries in this world today, in 2008, where Islamic law in some form is being applied and accommodated without any injury or harm to society at large. If societies at large elsewhere, and even in this country, I gave you the example of Islamic laws of banking. This is Sharia Islamic law that is being, that is being applied within this country, which is sometimes challenged in these courts, and which is nonetheless so recognized. So there is, one cannot talk of a, the Sharia being a foreign anomaly that is slowly or drastically coming into a country that has no experience in this. We have experience in this. I gave you examples of that, of Judaic law in New York. So, so <clears throat> this is what the Sharia really is. <clears throat> 